everybody, how's it going? Welcome to SMG Viewers Comments, episode 125. Hope you're gonna have a great weekend. Let's get right to it. Hey Glenn, I have finally saved enough money to put a few hundred bucks on an amp, and I was thinking of going Blackstar. But what would you recommend for a $400 amp for a metal player? Uh, first thing I would recommend is maybe saving a few extra bucks and maybe getting something a little better. I tried one of the Black Star combos, it was okay, uh, but apparently I didn't try the metal version, so who knows. You can check my review out um, if you look through my Fearless Gear reviews, it should be in there somewhere. But uh, yeah, just check out that playlist. But seriously, I don't know, I'd say maybe start with getting our nice Harley Benton 2x12 cab for a couple hundred bucks, and then maybe one of the Joyo Bantamps. Uh, seriously, they are loud enough to keep up with some drums, and the... Um, the zombie is a lot of fun. My buddy Brandon here, he brought a 4x12 uh, to a gig and he brought the Joyo Zombie and cranked it up and everyone's like, ha ha ha, that tiny little thing until he plugged it in and it's like, holy shit, that thing's a fucking monster. So I'd probably go that route, um, especially if you're going to do some home recording and that kind of shit. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome combo, especially for the money. Hey Glenn, when it comes to your studio ready guitars, are there any lefty guitars in your studio? I had to say that twice, you kind of wrote a tongue twister there. Um, seriously though, uh, no. <laughs> in 20 years of recording, I think I've recorded one or two lefty lefties and that's it. Um, I One of my best friends, the guy who helped me build this place actually, was left-handed, but he learned how to play right-handed guitar just so he'd have more choice of what to play. So, yeah, you know, lefty guitar players are pretty rare. You know, um, I think the Spanish Inquisition got most of them back in the Dark Ages, so there aren't too many left. Seriously, though, um, yeah, my friend Al, um, Al Petrovic from um, Gypsy Chief Goliath, he plays le a left-handed SG. You know, good guitar player. He helped me out on the, what do we do? The PV Windsor demo a couple years back. Great dude, but honestly, he's about the only guy I've ever had come in that played left. It's kind of a shame, actually. P.S. Anyone know what the fuck in the pocket means? <sighs> okay, I promise I'm not going to mock this. In the pocket simply means on the beat, in time. You're playing in, in the pocket with the drummer. Say you're a bass player, that kind of thing. The drummer and the bass player are in the pocket. That's all that means. You're playing in lockstep. No rocket science there. Hey Glenn, what's your opinion on recording kick drums without the resonant head? Cheers! For metal, I don't recommend it. I actually started out recording with the top head taken off, and it did give a pretty tight sound, um, but I had a couple long conversations with my good friend James Murphy about it, James being the former lead guitar player for Testament, Obituary, and Death, and he really recommended getting a second head on there and getting a kind of a natural compression thing going on. And um, I started putting a front head on my kick drum about 10 years ago and haven't looked back since. Just make sure you got a port for it and make sure, you know, you got a good beater head and a flam slam pad or, you know, a Danmar metal kick pad or something like that to generate the click. And yeah, you're in business. Um, I've done it that way, like I said, for about 10 years now and haven't looked back. It's just been awesome. It's a no brainer. Just do it. He or she. I'm offended by your uninclusion of the other 479 genders of this world. You, you transphobic, sexist, cisgendered bigot. Well now, somebody's been reading the SJW handbook, haven't they? Seriously, folks, if you're debating somebody and they start calling you a bunch of names like that, they've already lost because they have no valid argument other than to be able to call you names, and that really doesn't work. You know, here's the whole thing about that. I know there's a couple of trans kids who watch the show, and you know, like I said, everybody's welcome. I don't give a fuck what you do. Um, just don't hurt each other, you know, whatever. But about the whole offended thing, you know, oh, you didn't say this, so I'm offended. Well, here's the thing. If you don't do anything of value in society, nobody's going to give a shit what your opinion means. So you go around shouting, I'm offended, really has no fucking meaning whatsoever. I'm just starting out playing bass in a band. Insert bass player joke here. What is the difference between an amp and a cap? Now, this could be a troll question or this could be an actual legit beginner's question. I mean, like, hey, we're all new at one point. Um, the difference between an amp and a cab is simply, okay, especially for bass. So here we have the dark glass head. This is, what is this? This is the Microtubes 900. This is a 500 watt bass amplifier. Uh, this is the whole amp. That's it, it's solid state. It puts up massive amounts of power and it sounds absolutely incredible. Um, this plugs into a cabinet, a, basically a speaker cabinet. Great big box that holds four, four uh, 10 inch speakers and a horn for the treble. That's all there is, it's, it's a very simple setup. Uh, back in the 80s, they used to call it a brain and a bin and I never really liked that wording. I always thought it kind of sounded kind of stupid to be honest with you. But a head and a cabinet, basically you have your head and then that plugs into a cabinet. That's all there is to it. Best of luck with your career playing bass. Practice hard. Make your friends proud of you. 
Hey guys, I've been using an SM57 all my life for a recording guitar. I was wondering if there are better mics for recording guitars with metal tones. I lost all of my recording rig for a while there and I'm now looking for new gear. I was thinking of buying the SM57 again, but if there are better options, it'd be nice to know. Well, you know, I spent three days in LA hanging out with some of the best metal producers in the area and their number one mic of choice is the SM57. Um, you know, a lot of guys were pairing it up with, say, like an Onyx D6 or an MD421, but, uh, and I would definitely recommend that. We're going to be doing a show on that very soon. It might even be out this week before this one comes out. It all depends on how things fit together uh, for my scheduling. But you absolutely cannot go wrong with an SM57. That should be your first choice. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get one. Hey, Glenn, can you remember the first record you were blown away by as a young metal fan? Why, yes, I can. I was doing my homework as a young lad in the fall of 1984 and had put on Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance because I wanted something that wouldn't be too distracting. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but, you know, about two hours later, I was completely fucking hooked. Um, that was the first record that ever made my hair stand on end. Uh, the beginning of the Hellion Electric Guy. That is just, you know, sorcery. I don't know what's going on there, but that just it's just magic. That intro, just such an energy build up there. And um, I was completely blown away by the vocals because I had never heard anybody sing like that. I thought they had four guys singing in that band, kind of like the Beatles or something like that. And then I found out it was one guy, Rob Halford. That just floored me. I'd never, ever heard vocals like that, especially coming out of one human being. So I was just immediately hooked from that point forward. Hey, Glenn, I'm a high school student looking to get into film audio career. I have absolutely no idea where to start. Any ideas? Greetings from St. Louis, Missouri, U.S. Um, see if your high school has any kind of a media program, that'd be a good way to start. You know, watch some online tutorials, that kind of stuff. Watch my YouTube show, check out my recording tutorials. Um, if you want to get into filmmaking though, my suggestion would be see if anybody's doing music videos locally and volunteer to get on the crew and just help haul gear and lights and that kind of thing and you can see how a video is done. Because chances are, if you make yourself useful, the director is going to sit you down and show you some editing tips and some color grading and all that shit. Um, I, that's what I did. I had some uh, local university kids help me direct some help me out when I was directing a few music videos a couple years ago. And yeah, I did like sessions where like, okay, let's sit down. I'll show you guys how to color grade that kind of stuff. So that's what I'd recommend, um, especially if you have a local university. I'm not sure what you guys have in St. Louis, but if there's some school that teaches you know film or that kind of thing, you know, put a flyer up saying, hey. Um, you're a high school kid looking to get experience in making film. That's probably your ticket in right there. Dude, you're 47? Holy shit! I'm 28 and I feel like my chances of writing pluralistic amounts of music and putting them on my YouTube channel are running out because my clock is ticking. What tips do you have to keep going and not be discouraged? I work in the oil field 7 days a week, 12 hours a day with no days off. I've only had 2 off since August 11th and all my recording gear is six hours away at home. I feel like I'm wasting away and all I have is my amp and two guitars. Help, I'm a sad panda. 12 hours a day, seven days a week, you, sir, need a union. Seriously, fuck that shit. Why are you spending that much time in a fucking oil field? You should at least get one day off, if not two. Come on, man. That is why people went out on strike back in the 30s, was to get those weekends. I hope you're being paid well. Anyway, um, 12 hours a day, yeah, I'd be fucking exhausted to fucking write anything. But the thing is, you know, you're still pretty young. Uh, 27 is a good age to start writing cool shit though. And the trick is don't stop. The trick is to do stuff. Not just sit around and complain about it or sit around and think about doing it. You gotta actually do it and put the time in. I don't know how much free time you have at the end of the day when you're coming in. That's fucking crazy. 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, you know, I hope you're saving your, your cash up and, you know, gonna buy yourself a house or some cool music gear or something for putting that for, for kind of effort forth. In my own experience, I've worked, you know, six day weeks most of the time and still managed to run a studio on top of that. I was only working eight hour shifts, not 12 though. So that uh, will be a determining factor. However, uh, the trick is don't lose focus of your end goal. If you enjoy what you're doing, do it. I mean, in my case, I work in manufacturing. So coming home to the studio every night and presented new challenges and was a great polar opposite to the monotony of working in a factory. So just keep that in mind and hopefully that can help motivate you in achieving your goals. Good luck, dude, and whatever you do, don't give up. Saw this video a while back, very cool response. Great to see people learning from each other instead of the usual potato ego fest so common in social media. 
Yeah, I never quite understood that either. I mean, like, if somebody's going to come at me, you know, with a really well-reasoned argument, and, you know, it can help me make a better record, of course I'm going to fucking take the advice. It just makes perfect sense. So once again, I got to thank Sir Clotone for kind of opening my eyes there. That was a great fucking video. And, um, you know, like I said, I'll take all suggestions. If somebody has some cool ideas that I think can improve my recording, of course I'm going to listen to that. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure uh, to check out Pro Mix Academy and grab some lessons and improve your recording skills or join up with Produce Like a Pro where I will get to grade your mixes and you'll actually get feedback from real professionals. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.